It's a hockey marathon on TSN today. Sabres and Sens tonight. By the way, the Senators acquiring Mike Comrie from Phoenix for Russian prospect Alexei K. Gorodov. That's part one of our double header. And part two has the Dallas Stars in against the Vancouver Canucks. Every game crucial in the Northwest with the Canucks and Flames and Oilers and everybody else battling out for that division lead. Here's our recap. San Gagne in the box. Taylor Chorney across and Mark Stahl sticks out the skate. It goes off it and in. Brian Little trying to equalize. Lost in front of Kelly. Back to the power. Oh, stop that crazy. Brian Little robbed by Jeff Crazy. A crazy, crazy save. And thus it remains 1 0 for the Americans through two periods of play. Your second period scoring summary is brought to you by Bombardier. Proud to revolutionize transportation around the world. The key stat outside of the goal 0 for 6 on the power play. Canada has to get something going. And now here's Gord and Pierre. The 2007 IHF World Junior Hockey Championship available on TSN HD. Canada Sports Leader in high definition. Back here with Pierre Maguire. All right, Pierre, what's your prescription for the third period? Four check better. Make sure you play as a team. Get more second chance opportunities by attacking the net. Canada's spending too much time in the outside part of the ice. They've got to get more pucks in deep. But coming out of your own zone, you've got to come out together, Gord. Right now, Canada's coming out disjointed. That's thwarting their rush through the neutral zone. Pucks have to go deep, and they've got to get momentum off the four check by getting those pucks deep and getting people in the net. So the third period begins five on five. Canada down a goal. It's 16 game winning streak. And more importantly, it's two year run as World Junior Gold Medals at stake. And Steve Downey just gave Kylo Poso a whack on the back of the leg and got away with it. Now another tug from Downey. And then Oposo gives him a whack back. Now, Opo now Downey came up with a high stick. Gotta be careful there. Yeah, very careful. If Alf Runmark turns around, and now Runmark's talking to Brad Marchand on the other side, and Patrick Kane, two of the biggest pacifists in the tournament. And Oposo and Downey can hear the jaws. They move their way down the ice. Andrew Cogliano chips it in on Jeff Frazee. Into the corner, Marchand reaching for it. Cogliano for Marchand. Cogliano with the puck. Put the walk out in front. Hooked there by Trevor Lewis. Cuts in front. Downey put that wide. The next man for Downey. That's what Canada needs. Strong on the wall. Four check. Pressure turnovers. Oposo away with Lewis and Patrick Kane. Three on two for the U.S. Oposo across the line, fires high and wide. And the puck bounces all the way back to the line. The lively boards combined with fresh ice make the puck very dangerous. Oposo taken down by Parrott, no penalty coming up. Here's Oposo in the corner. Oposo back in front, Applecan chips it wide. Right down, puck still loose, Patrick Kane. Looking back with Eric Johnson. Now Johnson in the corner with Mark Stahl. The defenseman battling, centering pass for Applicator. And Justin Applicator with it. Good pressure here by the U.S. in the opening moments of the third period. Oposo fires. Nice take for stop. Now on the other side, Stahl. Paul Mara. Good wide pass for Brad Marchand. He threw his stick at that puck and it goes off on the chain. Big hit there as O'Mara takes down Eric Johnson. And Blake Jeffrey bounces it down to Kerry Price, and he'll hang on. The last time Team USA and Team Canada hooked up, it was a 6-3 win for Canada. Steve Downey took a misconduct in the second period. Now, Steve Downey's an agitator. Kyle is an important player for Team USA. Look at the stick work of Downey, and then he says, I'll give you a little save. But he's also strong on the floor check, and that's why Philadelphia made him a first-round pick. He can dominate on the boards, he can dominate in the slot, and he can finish plays off. O'Mara gets sent out. Jonathan Thames in to take the draw. Controlled by Ablocator. But O'Mara's up with it. And away comes Canada. Tom Pyatt with O'Mara and Thames. Pyatt had that shot blocked by Jack Johnson. No one can find the puck. It's in Johnson's pants, I think. I think it's in Johnson's equipment. Yeah. Yes, there it drops out. When you don't win a lot of face-offs, and Canada was 500 with Team USA in the second period, you have to have guys that are on a plan. You see O'Mara fight through right there, Gord? He had a plan. He knew what he had to do on the lost face-off. Canada gets a puck, and they're able to go on the attack and get their court check going. O'Mara wins that draw. Latang had a shot blocked by Jake Jeffrey. Jack Johnson lays it up for Justin Abdelkin. Hit by Latang, and Frazee got in the way of that. Threw that to the corner. Luke Bordeaux. Across for Chris Letang. 
And then Captain knocks it down to the American zone. Kyle Lawson banks it right back out. Chris Russell for Latang. Fires it in deep. Jack Skilly hammered Latang. Russell with it. Sets it up. Williams and fires. Shot blocked in front again. Kyle Lawson got in the way of that. The Americans blocking shots by the handful. Haynes going down that period attack. Haynes shoots. Crazy makes the stop. A bullet shot from Jonathan Taney. Haynes in the corner with it. With Cleese. Hell walks up. Fires. Just misses high and wide. All this off a good four check pressure. Balls there for Hell. Nate Gerby chips that out. And back to pick it up is Brian Little for Russell. Up ahead for Helm, steaming in there. Helm shoots, crazy to save. Helm goes battling for the rebound. And it's scooped up by Jack Johnson. Up along the boards for Ryan Stoa. And Chris Russell goes back to pick it up. Through the middle, Cleesh. Chips that down. Crazy had trouble with it. Gives it right away. Little fires. Save made by Crazy. Little taken down. Penalty coming up to the U.S. Back at the line. It bounces by Stahl. Right down to the Canadian goal. And Stahl has to hustle back. That just missed by a couple of feet. And now Stahl gets back. Puck has still not been touched by the United States. That is close. Parrott off the stick of Stoa. And finally, Brian Lee touched it. Canada to the power play. When we come back. Captioning of the 2007 Double IHF World Junior Hockey Championship on TSN is brought to you by Cold FX. Cold FX keeps the NHL on the ice. Canada's playing a little bit more the way they want to. Shoot the puck in. Brian Lowe gets a chance, keeps the play alive, then he draws a penalty. That's a good job. Make sure you get pucks in deep, and then Canada very lucky a puck doesn't go in. John Zimmerman in the box for Team USA. Canada just five shots on goal on six power plays. Cody Francis from the face off. Shoot, set the flex just wide. And the firing away, but the Americans blocking everything in sight. Back to go to Francis. Across to Chris Russell. Down to Steve Downey. That bounced away from him. Eric Johnson races to it and fires it down. 345 gone here in the third period. Canada down 1-0. Pagliano had that bounce off his stick. Jack Johnson sends it out. Marchand comes across the line, but they call delayed offside. And now Mike Carmen has that glove down by Brad Marchand. Waits for Cogliano to get back onside. Comes jumping across the line. In comes Marchand. With Downey. At the line, Cody Franson. Russell to the middle with Franson. Franson, who traffic blocked again by Carmen. Now back to a pass for Cogliano. Back to Franson. He's got Carmen watching him. Cogliano with it. Andrew Cogliano back to Franson. Has time. Again, Carmen scores. Plays it down to Russell. Shoots up the front wide. Wants to try to play that in front. Kyle Lawson got in the way. Now Cogliano back with it. Blocks out in front. Shoots. Blocked by Jack Johnson. Story of the game so far. The Americans blocking all these shots. Cody Franson along to Cogliano. Bring it down to Russell. Fires down to try to get a tip. That goes wide. Marchand. Back he goes to Russell. Russell shoots, just misses. 30 seconds to go on the power play, and the puck comes all the way out. Uh, shift again for Cardinal, Downey, and Marshall. And Downey had that bounce away. And it looks for a change, and Downey goes on. In comes Tom Pyatt, racing in his pile. Shoots, crazy, makes the glove stop with Jonathan Tage standing there looking for the rebound. Canada getting more chances here in the third period, Gord, because they're starting to rev up their engine and get the four check game going. They're playing more as a team. Darren Helm doing a good job, both for Team Canada. Downey earlier in the game, right to little in the second period, can't finish it off. And Cody Franson from the point, just missing the left post. Steve Downey again battling down low. Canada doing a better job, though, getting retrieval on shootings, getting four check pressure. Four Forcing Frazee into making some saves. And again, Taves wins that draw with his feet. And so play is called. The United States has the schedule working against it. Fourth game in five days. Played last night up in Mora in the quarterfinal. And has been off this Sunday. Or no, in front. That deflects just wide. Back to Latang. Final second to the power play. Taves back to Bordeaux. Shoots. And Frazee makes the glove saw. Crazy comes across with the glove again. And you see, you talked about the fatigue factor. 88 is Mueller, and he's a big-time player for the Americans, but Canada's been putting a lot of physicality on him. So you watch 88 to the right of your screen. He comes up with a ball. 
moves a little bit to his left, and Mueller can't get him the shooting on you. That forces Frazier into a big save. You can break down players and control their fatigue, especially when you start moving. Zimmerman is back on the ice. And the teams are back to five on five. Five and a half gone here in the third period. Ryan Lee looking for it up for Trevor Lewis. Lewis bounces it down to the Canadian zone for Kyle Oposo. Oposo fires. That goes well wide of the goal. Sam Gagne back out there for Canada. Now Bell's the player wearing number 38. Here's Gagne with it. Up for Latang. Ortiz. Ryan Lee rolled him into the corner. He and Dave, teammates at North Dakota. That puck bounced out in front. Kyle Lawson picked it up to the U.S. And Lawson works his way ahead slowly with Trevor Lewis. Lewis picks his way across the line. That drive from well out, steered away by Price. Banging away at it. It's knocked out by Brian Little. And Jack Johnson taps it up for Kyle Oposo. Oposo works his way in. Oposo still with it. Poke check by Mark Andre Cleach. And the American straggler Trevor Lewis was caught inside the zone, and so the Americans have to back off. Parrott up for Mark Andre Cleach. Fires it down. Darren Helm. This line's had lots of chances for Canada this afternoon. Parrott races back but can't keep it in. As it goes all the way down to the Canadian zone, icing the call against the U.S. Catherine and Nick hit the road in an attempt to look at killing another town to a recently released Las Vegas murder suspect. CSI, the number one show on television, tomorrow at 9, 8 central, on CTV. Canada needs somebody to step up and be a hero. One of those guys could be Jonathan Taves. The last time these two teams played, Taves had two goals. Skilly racing that loose puck. Halsner. Up to Andrew Cogliano. That bounced away from him. And Downey with it. Racing in with Neal and Cogliano. It bounced off Downey's stick. Chris Russell reaches in. Had to wait for Cogliano to get back on side. Abdelkin. He was pulled check. And Downey collided hard with Blake Jeffrey on Price leaves it there for Russell. Up for James Neal. Near the middle, Blake Jeffrey on, got in the way of that. Hey, I'm going to call that a glove pass. You're watching the World Junior Hockey Championship on TSN. We talked about Jonathan Taves. I remember early in the tournament against Sweden, he had his face plastered into the wall, and against Slovakia, he went screaming mm -hmm. hard on the wall tail end of that game. Maybe he's not 100%, so he's looking a little bit frustrated right now. Out there for the face off. Down to the Slovak zone. Out of the Slovak zone. Dallas, roll back zone. Dallas, or no. Bump. Or Letang. And here's Letang with Luke Bordeaux. Chris Letang. Two goals in the NHL this season for Pittsburgh. Across the line with Taves, but that was offside. Jonathan Taves in the last game, we talked about it against Slovakia, goes in in a foot race situation and he goes screaming into the wall. Balich That's against Balic, who's a big player, potential first round pick from Slovakia. Taves goes down. And they said it was just the Blues knee at the time, but you can see the way Jonathan's playing right now, and he doesn't look like he's got that extra gear that he had earlier in the tournament. Kyle Oposo away with Trevor Lewis and Pat Kane. In comes Oposo. Working down low, back at the side of the net, and Ryan Parrott knocked it away from him. O'Mara up for Taves with Tom Pyatt. And Taves rips it down to the American zone. Here's Pyatt. Gets there first for Taves. Jonathan Taves. In front for O'Mara. Couldn't get a good shot away. Taves clubbed down. Patrick Kane got away with it. Americans hollering about that. Johnson. Back for Taylor Chorney, the American goal scorer. And it gets by Patrick Kane. Icing waved off. No, it was not, pardon me. And we'll be back down to the American zone. Second round pick of the Edmonton Oilers. Plays at the University of North Dakota. Teammates with Jonathan Taves. In the second period, he whipped one right in. He's the guy that's been a difference maker here for the Americans. Just whipping it off of Mark Stahl. He's going for the cross piece through the derby, but it goes off Stahl's right skate and pass. Terry Price. From the face off, Chris Letang shoots at the flex off a of skate wide. Cleach for Brian Little. Little tied up by Peter Mueller. Mueller trying to bank that out. It gets over Little and out. Luke Bordeaux being watched there by Nate Gerby. Gerby with the steal, but Letang hustles back. Little. And that get by him, Mueller, in for Ryan Stoa. 
He was a member of that under-18 team that won gold in the Czech Republic in 05 as well. Ten of those Americans on that team that beat Canada in the gold medal game. Please come jumping in. That bounced away from him. Latang for Bordeaux. Luke Bordeaux spinning away from Peter Mueller. Up for Latang. Cleese chips it down in the American zone. Brian Little goes looking for it against Brian Lee. Zimmerman. Up quickly. Flips that high in the air looking for Ryan Stoa. And Chris Russell knocked it down. For Alsner. Alsner spun away from Stoa. And back for Russell. Downey. Back out there with Cogliano and Marchand. Penalty coming to USA. And oh, down great. is Downey right in front of the penalty box. And it's going to be Mike Carmen going off for the United States. So why would they blow the whistle just because Downey was down, I guess, for a protective yeah, reason? Yeah. Happens in the neutral zone. Downey moves a puck, and then he gets hit. Oh, blow to the head. Carmen comes up and hits Downey in the head. And the reason the whistle was blown was that down it was down on the ice. So off goes Mike Carmen, Canada, 0 for 7 on the power play in the hockey game. Seven shots on goal, and I would venture to say, Pierre, that the United States has three times that many blocks on the Canadian power and play. It's been standard operating procedure for the Americans. That's really been their big penalty killing scheme. Get in the shooting avenue, block shots. They've been only giving up four power play goals this whole tournament for a major reason why. It's not so much the goaltending, they just block a ton of shots. Like Jeffrey on one that draw, and the Americans whip it down the ice. Latang and Bordeaux on the back end. Tave, Sam Gagne, Tom Pyatt up front. In comes Jonathan Tave. Tave setting it up. Back to the line of Latang. Chris Latang through traffic off the pad of Frazee and wide. And Latang can't hold it. Canada should treat, keep trying to push the pedal to the metal here because the fatigue factor should set in at some point for the Americans. Bordeaux. Set off the boards. Gagne gets there first for Canada. Sam Gagne for Jonathan Taves. Gagne goes to the front of the goal. Here's Taves working his way in. Jeffrey Orfell. And Taves shot off an American defender. And why? Jack Johnson right in the shooting line. He's blocking that on Jonathan Taves. Price. Long lead pass to Gagne. Trying to drop it there for Latang. Eric Johnson at the line, kept in by Gagne. Back in front, tip off the goal post by Downey. Taylor Turner just got away with a cross check to the back of Steve Downey. And a great chance for the Canadians. Downey on the tip. Latang comes barreling in. There's Latang. Down for Cogliano. Back in front, too far for Downey. He was all alone in front. Back to pick it up is Russell. 40 seconds left in the power play. The book on this Canadian team coming into the tournament was that it might be goal challenged, and it has been in the semifinal against the U.S. And that puck goes up into the Jeffrey American going to get a penalty for interference in the neutral zone. Canada's going to have 29 seconds of five on three. And the referee, Ulf Runmark, knows he missed the Chorney cross check on Downey. And you'll see it. He's looking right at it. The puck comes in. Downey's in all alone. Downey does a good job controlling the puck. Americans can't get it out. Keep it in. Put it on puck. Now watch how the cross check to the back of Downey. He misses that. And then in the neutral zone, Blake Jeffrey on steps up on Downey. They call that interference. But he knows he missed the cross check earlier on that sequence. So here's your chance. Five on three. 10.56 gone in the third period. Little. Cogliano. Downey. Face off. Was won by Fraser and then fired out. Got to bear down on those face-offs if you're Cogliano. You just can't lose that thing clean. Russell and Latang on the back end. And in comes Chris Russell. Four goals for Canada. Russell setting it up. Ten seconds ago in the first penalty. Russell to Latang. Back for Russell. Down low, down it. Walks in, fires. Play Lazy it, makes the it. save. Cogliano was looking for the pass back door. Downey falls. Russell sets it up. Carmen out of the box. Russell shoots. One in front. Loose puck. Bounce behind Little. And racing to is Fraser to send it down. Up it comes for Latang. Outside. And that plays offside at the American line. Now Latang gets a stick up with Brian Lee. Very important. Canada doesn't get goaded in to take any penalties because you know all four marks looking just for anything now in terms of retaliation. Very important, you just concentrate on the goal. The goal right now for Canada is to get back in the game and score a goal. Craig Hartsburg knows that. The players know that as well. 
Ron Ralston is talking to home front Mark. And this is again the ongoing battle about the last change, which has been going on all afternoon. From the faceoff, this is Gagne with Taves and Pyatt. Minute 15 to go in the Canadian power play. Jack Johnson on the boards, kept in by Latang. Across he goes for Bordeaux. He's being watched, so Latang waits, shoots, shot blocked by Carmen. In the feet of Carmen, Latang plays that down in front, and it's banked out by Taylor Jordan. It's basically the same guys, Carmen and Sweat, that are just overplaying on the Canadian defenders. Canada hasn't made the adjustment to make the down low play. Americans are doing a real good job taking away the shooting avenue from the point. In comes Russell. Banks it down for Jonathan Taines. Has time. Plays it across Russell. Back to Bordeaux. Fire scores! Luke Bordeaux ties it for Canada! And why that shot's not blocked, it's a one-timer. And they're not happy. They think a Canadian player was in the crease, but they're going to still count this goal. It's a one-timer. If you one-time the puck, as Canada should have done earlier and more often, you're going to get pucks through when teams try to blend the lane and shoot. Stola can't react quick enough. Stola's too slow getting over. Martin's in the crease. Sam Donny is battling down low. He's not in the crease. That's a good goal. And Frazier's upset. But that's what you have to do, and that's the adjustment Canada had to make. More one-timers so the Americans couldn't get in the lane. That's the reaction you want. Now Canada has to be smart, though. Don't take the penalty. Keep dictating the turns. Getting pucks in deep. You'll force the Americans who are a fatigued team to take the penalty. Tony's coming over to talk to one mark saying they interfered with Frazee. You watch that again, and you be honest. Nobody touches Frazee. Nobody's in the crease. That's a good goal by Bordeaux. Good desperation by Canada. Power play of the game finally brings a goal for Canada, and it's 1-1 with 7.40 to go here in the third period. Canada with new life. Darren Helm comes barreling in, fires crazy, makes the stop, and he'll pounce on the rebound. Tie game in the semifinals of the World Junior Hockey Championship. Coming up later on this evening, Sports Center with Rod Smith. We'll have all your World Junior action and post-game reactions we get looking for who's going to the gold medal game? Plus, lots of NHL action coming away tonight. A double header on TSN this evening. Four games on TSN today. The first has Luke Bordeaux putting Canada into a 1 1 tie with the U.S. Played nine games so far this season for the Vancouver Canucks. He gets sent back to Moncton. Not disappointed. Knows he's got to take another step forward for his career to progress. One of those step forwards right here playing for Canada with Christopher LePan. Please falls. And Brian Lee picks it up for the U.S. Ryan Stoa plays that through center ice. Kirby got taken down. And every time someone falls, everyone's eyes in the building turn to referee off run mark. And the Americans weren't happy. They're saying Sam Gagne's in the crease. But you look at Frazee trying to come out and challenge on Bordeaux. 38 in white is Gagne. He's not in the blue, not in the blue, and the puck's already passed. Never in the blue. The appropriate call is made. Frazier can be mad. That's a little bit of gamesmanship. But Bordeaux with the big shot and Gagne providing a little bit of a screen, battling down low. John Torchetti, the coach in Moncton, where Bordeaux played, called him after he was sent back by the Canucks. Said, you want a few days off? He says, we're playing tomorrow night, right? He says, yeah. He says, well, I'm in. Four points. Yep. From the faceoff, Kyle Oposo battling with Chris Letang. Oposo back for Jack Johnson. Letang got in the way of that. Here's Downey. Feed that through the middle for Andrew Cogliano. Seven minutes to go in the third period in a 1-1 game. If they're tied through regulation, 10 minute overtime, then if necessary, a three-round shootout. Not five, but a three-round shootout. And then after that, it would be single rounds until a winner was declared. Marchand, up ahead for Andrew Cogliano. Barreling in his Cogliano. Poke check there by Kyle Lawson. Back in the corner. Downey had to get away from him, and this is Jack Johnson. Up ahead for Kyle Oposo. Canada changing. Oposo across the line. Harassed from behind by Marchand. Shot blocked by Taves. And Taves knocks it out for O'Mara. With Marchand. Brad Marchand breaking in. Marchand falls in front of Jack Johnson. And Taylor Chorney battling for it. O'Mara. Works his way in front. Nifty move by O'Mara. In comes O'Mara. Back in the corner. Brings it back for Mark Stahl. Through travel to hit Jonathan Taves. And Jack Johnson picks it up. That's a long shift for Jack Johnson. Very long shift. 
delivery shift now a knee knocker in a 1-1 game in the third period. Jack Skilly, back to the line, he goes short, he fires just off the side of the net. Back in front, Jack Skilly picks it up. Hayes, lifts that high off the glass and out. Skilly, gathers it back up, in comes Jack Skilly, shoots, Carey Price makes the glove save but he'll hang on. Skilly launches one on Carey Price, he's very calm but he wasn't this calm on the Taylor Torney chance. Charney's a goal scorer for the Americans. He shoots it right through a screen, and that just passed the left pole. It's Carey Price, 14th team, Canada, 14th. Skilly's a grinding player, first-round pick of Chicago. He does a good job getting that puck out to Charney, who launches it on goal. Carey Price, oh, God, he's been a huge story for Canada this whole tournament, and again, it's just because of how calm he's been. Darren Helm won that face-off for Canada. Russell, up for Latang. Chris Letang picks his way ahead. Long drive, Frazee juggles it and plays it back. Now turned over to Dan Bertram. Bertram. Helm left it there. Zimmerman in a foot race with Marc-Andre Cleese. Cleese for Helm. Battling with Mueller. Helm. Still battling in the corner. Helm falls. Still with it. Darren Helm in front. Taken down. No penalty coming. Cleese lost his stick. Back to the line it goes. With the cross to Latang. Latang works his way in. Latang shoots. He puts it high. Latang. Back down low. Great pressure by the Canadians. Under five to go in the third period. Helm leads it there. Canada desperate for a change. Cleese goes racing to the bench. Helm still out there along with Bertram. The Americans are desperate for a change too. Canada's got fresh legs on the ice. The Americans don't. Cogliano back out there. Taps it back for Stahl. Mark Stahl just missed Bertram. That would have been too many men. Crazy. Whips that high off the glass for Derby. And he hacks it out. Derby can't get off. Neither can Mueller. Fired back in by Parrott. Derby still stranded. James Neal steps up. Here comes Neal. Works his way in front. The puck hit the back of the net. Morgan should ice the puck right now. Oposo. In with Derby. And Derby finally peels off and heads up. Ryan Parrott trying to clear it up. Oposo gets in the way. Loose puck in front. Oposo. Dropping it back for Patrick Kane. He replaced Derby. Stahl hammers down Trevor Lewis. You call that an eraser. And Stahl lifts that high in the air from the wrong side of center ice. That'll be icing against Canada. 3.43 to go in the third. 1-1 one, one game. Today's game story brought to you by Molson Canadian Lager. True Canadian taste from Canada's oldest brewery. Luke Bordeaux scores in Canada's eighth power play. Frazee and Price have been tremendous in goal. And these two teams, whose last four games in the medal round have all been decided by one goal, are back in another tight one. And the little things matter right now. So it's a face-off to the left of Carey Price. Jonathan Taves is going to take this thing. And it's real important that Jonathan Taves bear down. If he's not going to win it against Abdelkader, at least draw so he can get some support from the wings. There's the support. Face off control by Taze. Knocks it back to Chris Russell. O'Mara out there along with Pyatt and Taze. Taze was stripped of the puck. It bounces down at center ice. O'Mara knocks it back for Russell. Abdicators all over him. Latang. Short bench now. Latang playing with Russell. O'Mara gloves it down. He had a great chance a moment ago. Taylor Chorney making that along the wall and gets it out. Chris Russell. Fires that in, Frazee knocks it to the corner, but that play was offside. And the faceoff will come all the way down to the Canadian zone. That's the first time we've seen that off tournament. Well, it's deliberate offside, yeah. they call it. Mm -hmm. and so the faceoff back down to the Canadian end. Later on this evening here in Lexan, 7.30 local time, it'll be Russia against Sweden in the second semifinal. It could be right after this game. Mueller versus Kleesch. And again, the play is called as a player won the draw with his feet. I think they're going to call Canada actually going into the circle too soon, so Kleesch has to get called out. Nonetheless, they've got two right-hand shots. That's a good news for it. Bertram versus Mueller. And Bertram wins that draw. Ryan Parrott being harassed by Gerby. Gerby streaking in there, gets it for Ryan Stoa. Stoa down for Gerby. Looking in front, Nate Gerby. He gets loose. Please steps into him. Gerby still battling. Down low he goes. Mueller for it. Peter Mueller. Sprawling is Mark Stahl. Mueller. Back in the line he goes. Zimmerman shoots. Carey Price makes the stop and hangs on. 
And Moore pushing and shoving breaks out in front of Carey Price as every inch of ice now being contested. Yeah, you're right, and it's all about the little things again. Canada wins the draw, they just can't get the puck out, and that leads to the Zimmerman shot on goal. Price does a good job fighting through traffic, and the Canadian defender is paired and stalled to a nice job not taking the penalty. The Americans know this is desperation time for them as well as the Canes, but they haven't had a lot of offensive flow. Lewis wins the draw. That shot by Kyle Lawson drifts high and wide. It's one of the ways of establishing offensive flow is winning face-offs. Downey up for Taves. In comes Taves with Downey. Jonathan Taves on Jack Johnson. Taves still with it. Taves fighting for that loose puck. Now Taves in the corner. Now roll for Cogliano. Cogliano trying to play that in front off the leg of Lewis. Taves with it. Plays it back for Latang. Chipped on goal by Downey, and Jeff Crazy made the stop. Kane. Up he goes for Lewis, gets by Oposo. And Latang goes back, ice and waved off. And then Latang plays that over the glass. It deflected off a stick and out of play. And here's why we're tied up. It's a power play situation for Canada. It's a good job by Chris Russell, a one-timer by Luke Bordoff. Glad as a pancake, so he can tee it out over the shoulder of Jeff Frazier with the screen from Sam Donnelly. We're going to get the United States too, Pierre. Oh, after absolutely. a tough game last night, four in five days, an afternoon game after a night game last night. There's something to be said, Pierre, for youthful exuberance. Youthful exuberance and rivalry. A lot to be said. You're absolutely right. Russell banks it there for Stahl. Two minutes left in his third period. A 1-1 game. O'Mara lost the puck to Chorney. In comes Taylor Chorney. Backhands that pass for Skilly. Skilly gets loose behind the Canadian goal. Skilly still with it. Sends it back off the skate of Eric Johnson and out. And now Johnson backhands it back in as the Americans tag up on side. Russell picks his way ahead, flips it down the American zone. Jeffrey on, gloves it down. And Latang waited for Russell to get off the ice, so that was too many men. Good on. Latang up for Darren Helm. Helm across the line with Cleese. Cleese fires just missed far side. Kirchner reaches for it. Can't hang on. Back the other way come the American. Jack Skilly barreling in on Bordeaux. Skilly still with it. At the line, Jack Johnson shoots. That hit Trevor Lewis. Helm was trying to skate away with a breakaway. Couldn't knock it down. But loose in front. Bordeaux reaches for it and banks it out. This is a great theater. Wow. What a hockey game between Canada and the United States. Darren Helm. Picks his way across the line with Cleese. He was poke checked by Lawson. Pass now for an odd man rush for the Americans. Lewis. In across the line. Carey Price hangs on to that. 43 seconds left here in the third period. Pierre, put these two teams <laughs> on small ice and play a seven game series, and I'll give you seven sellouts anywhere they play. It'd be a lot of fun. And players like Taylor Chorney know that. I mean, this is what they dream of. A lot of these players, this will be some of the biggest games some of them ever play. Mueller versus Thames with a face-off in the Canadian zone. Thames won the face-off. Thames all over him. Up it goes to Cogliano with Downey. Andrew Cogliano across the line with Downey. Cogliano still with it. Andrew Cogliano shovels up wide of the goal. Kane with it. Under 30 to go now in the third period. Cogliano jumps up with Tane. Cogliano trying to chip it there for Tane. Jack Johnson got the way. Eric Johnson got it. Now Cogliano with it. Tane knocked away. Shorty knocked that in front. And Peter Mueller rips that out of harm's way. Icing waved off as Parent goes back. Ryan Stoa watching him. Taps it back for Stahl. Final seconds of the third, and Canada and the United States are going to overtime in the semifinals of the World Junior Hockey Championship. And we'll be back with the extra period, and maybe even a shootout, right after this. Third period summary brought to you by Bombardier. Proud to revolutionize transportation around the world. Luke Bordeaux on the power play. Canada's eighth power play of the game. Scores the equalizer, his second of the tournament. And this game is going to overtime. And here's what we'll have. Ten minutes of four-on-four four, sudden death overtime. 
If it's still tied, it'll be a National Hockey League style shootout. That means three rounds of shots. If no winner's declared, then it's a single round. Team USA in the second period. Taylor Chorney trying to go cross crease to Derby. Off a stall skate instead. That makes it one nothing. Team USA in the third period on the power play. Chris Russell, Luke Bordeaux, had the time. Wait by Jeff Crazy, 1-1. One, one. That's right, yeah. Fifth overtime game in Canada's history at the World Junior Hockey Championship. The last, the bronze medal game in Moscow in 2001. Rafi Torres scored to win Canada a medal. Prior to that, the year before, Canada and the U.S. played in an overtime game and a shootout in Sheleftio here in Sweden. Canada won that one in the shootout. Pogliano and Downey up front for Canada in this four-on-four. Four. It's Lewis and Oposo for the States. Ten minutes of sudden death overtime. The next goal sends the winner to the gold medal game here on Friday. Kyle Lawson fires it down the Canadian zone. Latang turned that over to Kyle Oposo. He's got Latang on him at the line, kept alive by Jack Johnson, shoots, and Terry Price makes the stop. The last time the Americans played an overtime game was in this tournament against Team Sweden. The guy that got the winning goal on the power play was Jack Johnson. So Ron Rawson's going with a little bit of a hunch, getting Jack Johnson out there early on, trying to capitalize. Americans lost in overtime in their tournament opener against Germany. Jack Johnson's goal was the difference between the United States playing in the medal round and going into the relegation side had they lost to Sweden. Abdelkader wins that draw, but it gets by Taylor Chorney and out. Eric Johnson back for Taylor Chorney. Abdelkader, long drive and Carey Price hangs on to that easily. And it was a power play situation for the Americans against the Swedes. Jack Johnson taking back the turnover by the Swedes. It's good pump movement. Eric Johnson, Jack Johnson. Good take down. The Americans who lost their first two games are here in overtime in the semifinals. The United States trying to become the first team to win the gold medal with two losses. The second team, rather, win the gold medal with two losses. The first to win the gold medal after losing the first two. The only team to lose twice to win the gold, Russia, in 0-2 in the Czech Republic. Ryan Parent backs off. Abdelkader with Kane snuck in behind the Canadian defense, but Jonathan <laughs> Taves reached back and took it away from him. And oh, man. Baby, baby, was it ever close. And what there was was a little bit of indecision. Stahl had gone in, so Parent didn't want to pinch down. And so Parent just took his time, and the quick, long reach by Taves put Kane offside. That could have been scary for Canada. Patrick Kane leading the Americans in scoring with eight points. He's got four goals in his last three games. Climbing up the draft rate is huge for him. Peter Mueller jumping in for the U.S. Here is Mueller. Fires. Carey Price makes the stop on that. U.S. with three quick shots here to open this overtime. Very important. Now, you're going to see Ofer Unmark. He's going to talk to Christopher Letang and Peter Mueller. They were jousting at the end of that sequence, and he's telling them, you know what, fellas? You guys are both too good. I don't want to throw you out. Mind your manners. Face off to the right of Carey Price. 108 gone in the 10-minute overtime. Off the face off. Please caps it back for Chris Letang. Chris Russell raises that loose puck. Turns it over at the line. Short it. Or rather Lawson, and he couldn't backhand it back in. Lawson has to retreat with Brian Little on him. Mueller with it. Up for Lee to Gerby. And Price drops that down for Russell, skated by the puck. And now Russell barrels his way ahead. Gerby steps into him. Russell still with it, kicking down the line. No, no problem. They just got offside. offside. Everyone People, looked back at Russell. Like, Whoa, is that really? That was the linesman who made the call. How about the skating ability of Russell? We're into the overtime period, and Russell's in a foot race with Gerby, who's a very quick player. That just shows you how fast this little man is. And I really believe Chris Russell, because of that extra speed, will play someday for the Columbus Blue Jackets in the NHL, even though he's a bit undersized. Bro. He's got that heart. He's got the desire. He's got the offensive instincts, and he has the speed. Jordan. Plays it back for Carmen. Taylor Chorney, the American captain. He's got their goal. In comes Chorney. Chorney looking his way in. Carmen found that chance. Skilly looking for it. Now Carmen in the corner. Plays it back for Skilly. Skilly back for Jack Johnson. Taps it down behind the Canadian goal. Luke Bordeaux waiting for it. Skilly's on him. Two Americans down low. Ryan Parrott racing that loose puck. 
Plays it back out to center ice. And Skilly with it. Pogliano and Downey are the Canadian forwards. In comes Carmen. Mike Carmen on Luke Bordeaux. Pope checked him neatly. And Downey with it. Lots of open ice. Downey trying to get around Carlo Poso. In comes Downey with Cogliano. Downey across the line. They call him offside on Cogliano. You know what? I think this is a marginal call. And maybe the linesman was screened out. But we're sitting almost on top of the blue line. And Cogliano looked like he dragged his tail foot. But they're, you know, they call everything very, very tight. These guys care. I mean, that's the thing that's amazing is the, the passing level. And these guys are playing for the right reasons right now, Jordan. You can see it. Hayes wins the drawback. Chris Russell plays it down in the American zone. Eric Johnson up for Kyle Oposo. Hayes gives him a buck. O'Mara comes racing up. Backs it back to Russell. Canada changing team. Broke his stick. Trevor Lewis plays it ahead. Off the bench is Tom Pyatt for Canada. In comes Oposo. Kyle Oposo fires. Carey Price gets a pat on that. Down it goes to Lewis. Lewis lost the puck to Mark Stahl. Stahl barreling away. Three on two for Canada. In comes Stahl. Sets it in front. O'Mara shoots with the near side of the net. O'Mara. Back of the line. Chris Tang comes stepping up. Stahl making his way off. Tang fires it wide of the goal. Back up the other way it comes. Uh, race for it. Oposo lost that race to Ryan O'Mara. And Eric Johnson goes back as both teams get in the chain. Eric Johnson. Up for Patrick Kane. It was the Ontario Hockey League's leading scorer over the left of the U.S. camp. Now second. Helm out there with Cleish. Darren Helm chipping it ahead for Cleish. And that's offside again at the American line. Short benches for both teams right now. And sometimes the role players like Cleish matter in four-on-four -four situations because they want to get him out there against Kane, who's now leading the ice. But Craig Hartsburg can't make any changes with his forwards. The Americans will come with some fresh legs right now. Derby and Mueller on the ice against Helm and Cleese. Helm battling for that draw. Mueller won it. Just over six minutes remaining in the overtime. Jack Johnson with it. In comes Jack Johnson across the line. Working on Latang. Johnson plays it back for Mueller. Has time. Fires. Pice makes a save. Loose puck. Derby bats at it. Still loses the puck. Did not cross the line. And a traffic jam in front. Of Carey Price. Helm is poke check. Price has lost his goal stick. Price has got a goal stick. Mueller ahead for Jack Johnson. Across the line is Jack Johnson. Oh no. Penalty to Latang got a high stick on Johnson. Johnson cut. And now the United States will go to the power play in overtime in the semifinal. Latang, it's a simple one on one situation. He has to avoid the goal stick of Carey Price. And he tries to avoid it, but his stick comes up. He's in a one-on-one. -on -one. He knows he came up with his stick. He's trying to avoid the goal stick, so the stick comes up just a little bit. And there's the call. And it's a tough play for Latang. He knows the goal stick's there. He doesn't want to hit it, and the stick comes up. Ron Ralston calls timeout at the American bench. This will be a four-on-three power play. The Americans had one in the first period and had three tremendous chances. And there's Phil Housley, the longtime NHL player, and a guy who knows a thing or two about a power play drawing it out. He did the very same thing before the Americans scored against Sweden. He was the guy running the bench, and he was basically putting the plan in place. Canada's captain Latang goes off. Johnson got cut. And he's wondering why it's not a five-minute penalty to Latang. Face offs matter. Now you remember the Americans and the Canadians was a five on three. Jonathan Taves won a big face off in the first period of that game. Latang was able to clear the puck, and that got Canada going with their aggressive forecheck. This face off's critical. 4.23 left in the overtime period. Canada now shorthanded with Otang in the box. Taves out there along with Stahl and Perrin. It's Oposo, Kane, Eric Johnson, Peter Mueller for the U.S. And Taves wins that drop. Perrin backhands it out. Taves did such a good job directing Perrin where he's going to put the puck. Taves on his forehand. He's a left-hand shot and he did exactly what he wanted to do. Mueller across the line for Kyle Oposo. 
And Oposo sets it up. It's a four on three. Mueller crisscrossing with Eric Johnson. Mueller across to Eric Johnson. Now Johnson to the middle. He walks by Kane. Down low for Kane. Back to Mueller. Mueller waits. Now down for Kane. Kane works his way in. Back down for Eric Johnson. He's got time. Johnson looking in front for Oposo. Johnson walks back in front. Back for Mueller. To Kane. No shot yet. Now Mueller fires. That was blocked by Jonathan Kane. Stall racing that puck. Couldn't get to it. Gets a stick on Kane. Just keeps it in. Kane. Rocking in. Takes it down for Eric Johnson. Decides not to shoot. Back in front. Off the leg of Paris. Eric Johnson with it. Back in front. Johnson shoots. Off the leg. And Carey Price got a piece of it. With his old man, Oposo. Peter Mueller with it. Great pressure for the U.S. Under a minute to go on the power play. Mueller works his way in. Mueller still with it. Back for Eric Johnson. Fires. That goes wide. Mueller. Back at the line now. 45 seconds of the power play. Mueller. Johnson shoots. Didn't get all of it. Canada racing for it. Here. To the line. And out. And the Canadian players at the bench urging that puck to leave the zone. Frank still out there. Mueller with it. Peter Mueller for Eric Johnson. 30 seconds of the power play. Mueller across to Johnson. Waits and shoots. Waits to save. Rebound. Oposo had it taken away by Pyatt. Back in front. Johnson waits. Shoots. What a stop by Price. Heron with it. With the backhand. Can't get it out. Eric Johnson. Final seconds of the power play. Johnson works his way in. Plays it across for Mueller. Now Mueller across to Johnson. Eric Johnson shoots. Price makes the stop. Heron's out of gas. That's why he can't get the puck out. Latang out of the box. Eric Johnson shoots back door deep for Keeney. Knocked it wide. Now Pyatt. The U.S. is changing. On comes Pyatt on Eric Johnson. Pyatt shoots. It's off a stick over the glass and out of play. And that was two of the grittiest minutes you will ever see. Ryan Parent's going to need an oxygen tent over there. He was on the full two minutes. But it's Carey Price staying with it. Eric Johnson coming over. Carey Price shuffling along the ice. And then Eric Johnson with a quick release. And that's why Parent couldn't get the puck out. He was on the full two minutes of that kill because he was a right defenseman. Cogliano, Downey, Latang, and Russell come out for Canada. Off the faceoff, Downey racing for it. And Taylor Chorney gets there. 3.20 to go in the overtime. Jack Johnson moves it back to Taylor Chorney. Jack Johnson, I would venture to say, has played 35 minutes a game for the last three games for the U.S. And he backhands it out. Trevor Lewis plays it down to the Canadian zone. In comes Chris Russell for it. Russell has time. Being watched by Lewis. Plays it ahead. And down he chips it down to the American line. And in comes Gerby with Lewis. Nate Gerby works his way in. Fires. That goes well wide. And all the way out the other side. Lee almost played that before Jordy yep. came on. Hartsburg screaming at the referee. It was too many men. Jack Johnson. Through the middle. Or Lewis. Trevor Lewis with Nate Kirby. In comes Lewis. Fires just missed on the far side. Jack Johnson lays it down in deep. Two and a half to go in the overtime. A shootout looming in the semifinal. Luke Bordeaux, the Canadian goal scorer, brings it ahead. In comes Bordeaux. Bordeaux is trying to get around Jack Johnson. Out the other side, it comes to Brian Little. Little spins away from Brian Lee. Little still with it. Bordeaux heads off. Back he goes to Mark Stahl. Down low for Mark andre Cleese. Russell off the bench. And Cleese couldn't play that out in front. Mike Carmen barreling across the line. In comes Carmen. And Little took that away from him. U.S. changing. Stahl taken down by Skilly. And Mark andre Cleese comes back for Stahl. Under two to go now in the overtime. Brian Little. Skilly all over him. In come the Americans. Carmen. Mike Carmen. Gave that away to Little. Canada changing. In comes Little. Waiting for help to arrive off the bench. Little. Back door pass just missed Taves. Jonathan Taves with it. They don't have to go in the overtime. Kyle Lawson. And it's tapped back for Eric Johnson. Johnson. For Lawson. Hyatt and Taves up front for Canada. Eric Johnson with it. Johnson trying to bank it there for Mueller. Hook check by Latang. In comes Taves with Pyatt. Tom Pyatt across the line. In comes Pyatt. Pyatt shoots. Springs with the save. Rebound. Cleared away by Eric Johnson. Under a minute to go in overtime. Latang fires. Springs with the save. Loose puck in front of Pyatt. Can't get there. 
Tommy Pyatt's got some wide legs coming off. He takes a relay from Jonathan Tiggs in the neutral zone and he drives wide with speed, trying to work on Taylor Chorney. He puts one on Frazier. Frazier, little weak, bad clear. Another second chance for Latang. He puts it on goal. McFrazy freezes it up. Downey for the faceoff out there along with Cogliano, Russell, and Bordeaux. The faceoff won by Trevor Lewis. Jack Johnson spins away from Downey. Away comes Johnson. Jack Johnson barely went on Bordeaux. Spins back. Tries to play that in front. Downey got in the way and almost got away. Chris Russell hustles back. Taps it there for Andrew Cogliano. And Cogliano comes racing ahead. Cogliano trying to get around Chorney. Can't. 30 seconds to go in the overtime. Trevor Lewis plays it ahead for Patrick Kane. Off the bench. Kane for Jack Johnson. Johnson shoots and save made by Carey Price. Got to be careful when you go for a skate at this time of the game. Andrew Cogliano goes for a bit of a skate. The Canadian players are a little bit tired. That gives open access to the Americans into the zone. See Cogliano coming late. Carey Price coming up with another glove save off Jack Johnson. Face off to the right of Carey Price. It'll be Mark Andre Cleese to take the draw against Peter Mueller. Mueller wins it. Poposo back at the line. Jack Johnson shot blocked by Darren Helm. And Helm away with Cleese. Darren Helm in across the line. But tangled up with Cleese. Jack Johnson backhands it up. Racing forward is Oposo. Taken away by Cleese. Five seconds in the overtime. In comes Cleese. Cleese back in front. Taken away by Mueller. And this semifinal game is going to a shootout as Canada and the United States author another classic at the World Junior Hockey Championship. And the shootout is coming up next. Welcome back to Lexan, Sweden. Gord Miller, Pierre Maguire just coming up on 20 to 7 now local time and Canada and the United States are making time stand still. They're going to a shootout. The winner will go to the semi or to the finals rather of the World Junior Hockey Championship. It'll be a three round shootout. Carey Price stands tall. The United States out shooting Canada 12 to 2 in the overtime. Because of the power play presence of the Americans, because of the Latang penalty on Jack Johnson, that led to all the chances against Carey Price. He was heroic obviously during that power play opportunity for the Americans. Latang and Taylor Chorney right now talking to the official off run mark from Sweden. It's going to be a coin toss. Normally the home team would go second, but they'll call it. And we'll see if you get a chance to shoot first or second. In the National Hockey League, by the way, teams that shoot first win more often. And we'll see. So the tank called it. Canada wins the toss, and we'll see what the decision was, and then we'll see who the shooters are. Russia and Sweden are set to face off in about 47 minutes from now. Not likely. They're going to have to wait. Canada's only other shootout at the World Junior was against the U.S. in the bronze medal game in Sheleftio in 2000. So they'll get the shootout order settled and Canada's reign as the back-to-back -back World Junior champions rests on this shootout. Crazy's going to be in first. Canada will shoot first. And all the shots will be at one end. It'll be Downey for Canada. Steve Downey against Jeff Frazee. And this crowd not so much cheering as it is now holding its collective breath. Say what you want about it. It is compelling drama. And Canada's been in more than a few of these in international hockey over the years. Steve Downey from Queensville, Ontario, the first shooter for Canada. And away we go in the shootout. Steve Downey on Frazee. Downey. Hook check by Frazee. And the Canadians are arguing that Frazee threw his stick. Yeah, they are. But Downey is turned away. The Canadian bench is living. Let's see. Downey comes in, makes a move. Hard to tell from that. First shooter for the U.S. is Patrick Kane, the 18-year-old. He didn't throw a stick. Kane for the U.S. Chance to give the Americans the lead. Kane, in on Price. Kane, stopped by Carey Price.
And this is a part of Carey Price's game that's improved so much. Staying with shooters and then stretching out and making himself look big. And not only does he make the save, he puts a little tug on Kane's foot. The shooter for Canada is Brian Little. Doesn't have a goal in the tournament, but he was third in OHL scoring when he left for the Canadian camp. And Little comes steaming in. Shoots, goal! Leaps into the Canadian bench. And Mueller will shoot for the Americans. Comes screaming in with some speed and just snaps it low glove side. Ooh, Darren Helm happy with that one. In comes Mueller for the United States. Mueller with a chance to tie it. Mueller in score. 1-1. One, one. Going into the third round. Jonathan Taze will shoot for Team Canada. He scored on a penalty shot against the Americans in the last game. Mueller comes in, just goes high and going on Carey Price. Now Taze with a chance to put Canada ahead again. And in comes Taze. Taze, two scores! And now Canada can win it. Winnipeg, Manitoba, be proud of Jonathan Taves. Chicago Blackhawk fans get real excited about Jonathan Taves. Two situations against the Americans like that, twice he scored in big moments. Jack Johnson will shoot for the United States. Try to keep his team alive. In comes Johnson on Carey Price. Johnson scores! And the shootout continues. Now round four. His future is so bright. Los Angeles Kings. Be cheering him on for a long time. He's got the offensive upside. He's got the grit. And he's got talent. Now Little will shoot again for Canada. And you can use anyone you want after the first three. Little scored two shots ago to give Canada the lead. Coming in again on Jeff Crazy. In comes Little. Oh, check by Frazee. And now the Americans can win it. See, Frazee remembered Little shooting, and Frazee was deep in the net. Watch how far out Gord Frazee comes out to challenge on Little. He comes out so Little knows he's going to have to make a move, and there's the active stick. That's good goaltending. Very good goaltending by Frazee. And now Kane can win it for the United States. Patrick Kane, Elon Price. Kane shoots, stopped by Price, and the puck is just on the line. <laughs> oh, Carey Price just kept it out. Kane tries to beat a five hole. And the Americans want it to go to video oh. review. No, it's no good. Taves will shoot again for Canada. Taves to give Canada the lead. Here comes Taves. Two scores! That is a major league football. What a goal by Jonathan Taves. There's no room for error. He does this against Zach Kopp. There's no room for error on that shot. That's off the niche and in. Now Price will face Mueller. Canada's second chance to win it in the shootout. And in comes Mueller on Carey Price. Mueller, a big scores! And Mueller once again staves off elimination for the U.S. Uh, Mike Barnett and Wayne Gretzky are watching this in Phoenix, and they're saying, can we get this guy in the lineup? What a shot that is. Cogliano will shoot next for Canada. It's round six. Cogliano. He a crazy score. And Cogliano does the lead. Just getting like Lambeau Field. This guy scoring, hopping right into the bench. And that's the second time Team Canada has beaten Frazee that low glove side. You saw Little do it and then Cogliano. Jack Johnson saved the Americans in round three. In he comes again. Jack Johnson on Price scores! On to round seven we go. And it'll be Taves again for Canada. Wow. It's a release. It's just a release point. You just see the guys that are NHL ready, and there's a guy that's NHL ready. Taves is two for two in the shootout. In he comes again. It's the move scores. This guy is unbelievable. Yes, he is. Canada has scored five times on seven attempts, but the shootout continues. And the Americans are going back to Mueller. He's two for two.
for two. He's going to get arm weary. Three times the Americans have faced elimination. Three times they've scored. Three times Taves has used a different move. In comes Mueller on Price. Peter Mueller. Stop by Price. Canada's going to the gold medal game at the World Junior Hockey Championship. and his son Grant, Rick Brace, Gary Price, the pitch was down the score. Rounds it took. Canada scored five times, the Americans four. And this game, everything you thought, Canada and the United States could and should be. Gary Price stays with Mueller, Mueller tries to go 5-0. The two times the Americans try to go 5-0 on Gary Price, he closed it right down. Don't forget the American courage, but remember the Canadian penalty kill board in the overtime period. It was gigantic, led by Terry Price. The Americans outshot the Canadians in overtime, 12-2. Terry Price, the pair of the game for Canada. Who else? Anaheim Lake, B.C. is where he grew up. Williams Lake is also his hometown. Those plane rides were worth it. His dad, Jerry, used to fly him by their own plane down to practice. He lost the under-18 gold medal game to this man, Jeff Frazee, and Frazee, who came in as the American starter in Game 3, was tremendous for the United States. There wasn't one player that played for their respective countries today that took a day off. 17 straight wins for Canada at the World Junior. None more knee-knocking than this. And again, it's time for O'Canada. The players picked up I think there, you know what? I think there's more player of the game presentations. <laughs> This is the player of the game, the players of the game, again, Just saying. Top three, it's the top three players yeah. for each team, so Price for Canada, Jonathan Taves, he was selected by the way by Canada, the team players were all lined up ready for the song, see that mark on his nose, he probably got a recut, the sutures came out after that celebration. And Chris Letang was the third player chosen. And for the United States, now we'll have three players chosen. And then we'll have O'Canada. Jack Johnson will play in the bronze medal game tomorrow. That'll be his last game for the U.S. National Junior Team. And it will draw to a close one of the great careers in U.S. Junior Hockey. And the next time you see Jack and Eric Johnson wearing Team yeah. U.S. uniforms after this, Olympics will be in Vancouver at the yeah. Olympics. They've both got a great chance to be there. And I'll tell you, this guy's got a chance to go number one in the NHL entry, Jack. Patrick Kane of the London Knights. And now, the Canadians, after pulling it out, will hear the song again.
take a breath, Canada. That was something else. Another semifinal still to come. Canada goes for gold on Friday at the World Junior Hockey Championship.